Hello group 4 and especially Henri, uh, uh, you uploaded uh, your group model and I'll just uh, open it and uh, give you a few comments about it. You uh, had uh, this uh, semester project workshare and remember if, if you do similar, uh, remember to detach it from central file. So I uh, open a individual uh, model that I can uh, test with. And Detach and discard worksets. I'll do that so it's a total individual model. The first thing I'm going to do is simply save it as a, um, a detached. Detached by PC so you know it's a test. Just to demonstrate uh, like uh, this one. First of all, Henri, uh, your uh, pile file, I, I simply recommend you to, I mean, we can see them here and also in the um, your model that you have selected <coughs> a family which actually contains two families because if you double click here, you will open the family editor and you can see you have one extrusion here and another extrusion here which it makes it very complicated to adjust if you are simply just looking for a pad foundation. So basically I recommend you to uh, delete them and maybe do as following. I simply close the family editor and don't want to uh, save any of it and just uh, go to your um, model and ho hold down the control, select all the the uh, pile foundations like this and uh, deletes. Again, basically I recommend you strongly to make a plan. Don't think that Revit will do the solutions for you. I mean, first of all, I'm really missing a, a grid where you would like to have uh, the, the pad foundation placed. And just to give you an example, because if we see through your uh, your uh, construction as it is now, I mean, this one, is it a prefabricated sandwich facade element, or what does, does it contain of? If we go in underneath the structure, it looks like you have some wood cladding, you have some uh, um, concrete, you have insulation and concrete again which seems like uh, is it two plates of concrete and again are they load bearing uh, both of them i guess that normally the inner leaf here would be the load carrying part and then you would have a kind of you know a climate shelf but we'll uh, talk about that what i'm what i'm aiming at is that before you actually make also the foundation and the details you simply will have to make sketches gladly on a piece of paper to see I've just found on Spencom you know if you have a sandwich facade element maybe your foundation should not go underneath the the, the climate shell here but just underneath the load carrying uh, inner leaf so please make sketches of how it should be before you enter uh, Revit and when you've en entered Revit also make your plans uh, concerning an, an actual grid line I just demonstrate on the uh, your model now this is uh, not accurate because I'm just demonstrated how it should be uh, working first of all in the group make sure that you have the detail settled and then make grid lines so it can be a help underneath the architecture. You have these grid lines where you can make grid lines at a at a proper uh, distance, uh, depends of where it should be placed according to. I'm just placing, uh, you know, uh, for the for the demonstration. And you would uh, copy those. You could say copy. 
and make sure that you can have multiple and you simply click and say at a certain distance, I don't know, 4800, it depends strongly at your uh, project, 4800, 4800, and there are uh, many ways of making uh, to play, you know, the, the full range uh, about the modular grid. Also, at the same time, make modular grid in this distance, depends on how, how it should be placed. And again, make copies like this at a certain distance uh, here. Uh, multiple depends about the, the, the geometry. Maybe you I just place one here. Copy over here. And you decide, you know, how it should be placed. Normally, and I d just do the, the finished uh, uh, modular grid uh, like this. I don't know at all, you know, if these modular grid fits, but it's just uh, to, to demonstrate. Because if we see your uh, model here, I guess that uh, where you would ha like to have pad foundations is if you need a framework uh, something like this, so I guess that uh, your pad foundation should be here in a certain distance between the, the, the portal frame. We'll discuss tomorrow if, if I misunderstand the, the, the plan totally, but I just demonstrate uh, how it, the, these pad foundation could be made. I go to the, to the um, north again and I just delete those because I guess that you would like to have your st uh, normal strip between the pad foundations. I guess you would have them between uh, the the pad foundations and to the level of footing. Uh, it seems like you have uh, here. Uh, it's a six thousand and fifty one hundred. That's only nine hundred. I guess if it should be first three, it, it is one point two. But we can discuss that tomorrow. Just for this example, I will delete. Uh, the the these ones here and start from scratch and I would recommend that you start with these pad foundations say if we want to have underneath the structure and still uh, these uh, isolated pad foundations not this pile but if I could see you have tingled with uh, a normal footing rectangular and I say if we would like to have 800 by 800 by 900 in depth just for this example you could take some of the existing ones say edit type duplicate it and make yourself a new one where you would say well I think I will make one 800 by 800, oh sorry, 800 by 900 in depth. And just to see that, uh, you know, the, uh, to find it, uh, I call it a test. You can adjust, now we have duplicated the, the pad foundation and you can uh, adjust it uh, accordingly how you would like it, 800 by 800 by 900 in uh, depth and OK. Well, if you took it from the ground terrain and you it now said structure, isolated uh, pad foundation and took the one you've chosen, um, you will see that uh, it is, oh sorry here, isolated pad foundation, you will see that it is from the ground floor and it goes downwards because if I, if I um, draw one, it's not visible in the, in the, th this level, it can be seen here because it is, um, 
from the, uh, the terrain and downwards. So uh, a, a tips and trick could be if you at the ground floor, because then you can see w what you are doing. If you as underlay uh, is choosing here, as underlay, if you take your footing level, then you, when you are making the pad foundation here, 800 by 800, you can now see uh, where you place it. And I guess it sh should be placed not underneath the, the climate shell, but just behind it and pretend that we would like to have the strip foundation uh, between these pad foundations. There are many ways of how it could be copied and mirrored, but just as an example here, I uh, uh, showed them and they could be organized. Depends of uh, this neat uh, uh, sketch, you know, uh, how they should be placed. Um, underneath your your uh, um, system again I'm just guessing uh, like this if they should be adjusted you can also make yourself an extra um, reference ref uh, p plane if you need to adjust uh, all these you can always make helping lines where you later on can adjust and uh, there are different ways of, of uh, adjusting them. Say if if um, you say align, modify, align, if this should be aligned to this one, you can, you know, all these um, uh, tools in Revit where you can align uh, the path foundations. Again here if uh, you have uh, aligned you can put a refer plane like this and say this is placed correctly. Many ways of uh, adjusting if it should be aligned. I just have to align this one modify, correct it, say align, and it could be, this one should be aligned to this. Many ways of doing that. Don't lock too many items. I uh, keep them unlocked. So far we are having, you know, pad foundations like this. And if you should have a strip foundation between the, those, it could be done something like, uh, like uh, following. Well, you can uh, go back to the ground floor terrain and also now you can see since we have uh, as an underlay the footing again, you can see them so it's pretty needy. And then to make strip foundation between these pad foundations, you can go underneath the architectural wall, find some of the from the template uh, either foundation uh, some of the the one inbuilt it or you can choose one say edit type duplicate it and make your own model but if i say i would like to have this foundation which says combined with the concrete lightweight uh, block, block between uh, i can choose this and uh, make sure that it is going into depth in the template they are produced like that if you would have it say uh, depth as your pad foundation which is 900 check tomorrow please whether it should be a 1200 in 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 frost free but if it is 900 make sure that you are choosing the finished face interior because then you could having underlay the footing you could uh, just uh, uh, make sure that you you uh, snap to the proper here between the pad foundations like this. Here. 
and I'll just take one more here. And um, on the other sides, if you have, oh, the, these should be adjusted, but if I just take uh, as an example here, oh, here, well, uh, now you should change to face, uh, uh, finish face exterior in order to snap the proper way like this. And make sure you snap to the uh, correct one. Just to demonstrate how it looks in, in the 3D, you can now see that you have a foundation type where you have the pad foundations and you have uh, strip foundations uh, between them. Uh, like this. So that's one way of uh, making uh, these pad foundations and uh, strip foundation. But tomorrow, remind me of uh, telling you uh, the whole class about that you need to make the grid and the connected details uh, before you know actually you go into the um, to the actual design of Revit. Don't let Revit control you. Make sure that you know what you want before you uh, uh, make it uh, in Revit. All right, then. It was a, you know, just a rough movie. So see you tomorrow, folks. Uh, group 4. Bye for now.